Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Jewel video for you guys. So we are going to be taking yet another look at our Adventure Prank Kids deck today. Uh, but we are not doing ladder climbing. This is going to be my first video covering duels from the Duelist Cup, which is currently underway at the time I'm recording this. It is the first day of the event. And I have managed to, not to my own horn or anything, but already level up from level 10 to 15. Uh, as we all know by now, you start at a level based on the rank that you ended the last season on. And, uh... My initial climb actually went very well. I'm going to even show here real quick. Um, let's see. It would be under Duel, Duelist Cup, blah, 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 Match History. Yeah, as you can see, uh, these were my these were my games from, from level 10 to level 15. These were the 13 games I ended up going uh, 12 and 1, which is definitely a pretty good feeling if I do say so myself. Uh, now granted, you can't lose ranks, I don't think at all during that point, so I think my, some of my opponents might have been a little loose about conceding as a result of that, but uh, definitely still feels really good. And of course, obviously I'm using Adventure Prank Kits, right? I'm using just like the best deck right now. Um, and I do think this is probably just the best deck right now. I don't even think probably, I think this is just the best deck right now. I don't think it's quite like a landslide. I think there's still a lot of very viable decks in this format. I've touched on this before. I, I kind of see this format in ways as fairly similar to the initial one with Master Duel, where like, yes, we have Adventure, Adventure Prank Kids as the clear top deck, just like, yes, we had Tri Brigade as a clear top deck, um, but there's still other of uh, plenty of other viable decks out there in the format. Uh, both that was the case then, and I believe is also the case now. Uh, now, <laughs> the, the thing is, like, you know, Tri Brigade was, yes, the best deck, was also a very fair deck. Adventure Prank Kids is definitely less fair of a deck. I think any deck that plays the Adventure Engine is inherently a little bit quote-unquote unfair, but, um, you know, it's, it's the Adventure Engine. It's just kind of the nature of the game right now. So, yeah, we'll uh, run through the list here, and then we will take a look at some gameplay from, again, those... Uh, games during the Duelist Cup, and yeah, I gotta be totally honest with you guys, I also just like, I'm not gonna lie, I opened like the Stone Cold Nuts in so many of these games, I I feel really bad, not really bad, but uh, I feel bad because I, I see posts on the, I, on the subreddit of like, uh, yep, day one, and I'm already like, I've lost eight coin flips in a row, and I'm just thinking like, wow, I feel like I won like eight coin flips in a row at one point, and also my opening hands have not been too shabby either. But of course, that's always kind of the case. Not always, of course, but that's usually the case with Adventure Prank Kids. I've talked about it a lot, but I definitely have to, you know, hammer home the point that this deck's main strength is its consistency. That is what makes this deck the best deck right now, because you only need one Prank Kid in order to do uh, your combo. If you have two, you can do a, be a slightly better version of your combo, but that leaves you so much room to... That, only not, that not only leaves you a lot of cards to draw to potentially get your combo off, but also leaves you a lot of room to include naturally like the Adventure Engine DPE line, tech like Droplet, um, and of course Crossouts and Imperm, although those are less tech and more staples, but still uh, just very, very... Uh, strong deck. There's a lot of decks that are strong because of how they play, and then there are other decks that are strong because of how they can be built. I think Adventure Prank Kids is a little bit of both, but I think it tends to be more of the latter than the former, uh, just because this deck can be built and played out um, in so many, like, not only just different ways, but also just with uh, such variety in general because of, again, the fact that you only need one Prank Kid monster in your hand in order to be able to do your combo. Just totally lends to why this deck is so good. Anyway, um, I'm done gushing and fawning over right now. Let's go ahead and, like I said, break down the list and take a look at some games. We are playing two Prank Kids Fanzies, three Maxi, three Prank Kids Dropsies, three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, three Prank Kids Lampsies, three Water Enchantress of the Temple, one Destiny Hero Celestial, one Prank Kids Roxies, one Destiny Hero Dasher, one Wandering Griffin Rider, one Nibiru the Primal Being, one Foolish Burial, two Fusion Destiny, Two Bright of Armisir, one Drickaback, the Writable Dragon, three Prank Kids Place, one Prank Kids Pranks, one Fateful Adventure, two Call by the Grave, one Prank Kids Pandemonium, two Nobleman, or I always call it that, two Crossout Designator, two Forbidden Droplet, and two Infinite Impermanence. Extra deck is going to contain one Prank Kids Rocket Ride, one Des Destiny Hero, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, one Prank Kids Battle Butler, one Totally Awesome, two Link Spider, Two Prank Kids Meow Meow Moo, two Prank Kids Dodo Dodo Doo, one Prank Kids Bow Wow Bark, one Protoplant Vert Anaconda, one Nightmare Unicorn, 
one Prank Kids Rip Roaring Roaster, and then finally one Access Code Talker. All right, there is the list. Let's go and take a look at some games. Okay, so apparently you can't confirm your opponent's deck in the Duelist Cup replays, so I guess I don't I don't remember all what I played against. I guess we're just gonna have to find out together now, won't we? And the first of many ridiculously amazing opening hands. Like, look at this. I was like, again, not to like. Of course, it's not. I can't brag about luck. I'm not bragging. I am just kind of, I guess, boasting. Because there is a difference between bragging and boasting. Um, I can't help but boast. I mean, look at this hand. I opened a lot of hands like this in this stretch of the Duelist Cup. I'm not going to lie. Which, of course, probably means in the latter half, I'm going to open a bunch of god awful dead draws and not going to be able to do anything. But, nah. We'll figure it out. We'll get there. Um, yeah, I don't know about the second, like, stretch of the Duelist Cup. I don't know how much of that I'm going to play. One, because I actually work on weekends, so uh, that already is going to severely limit kind of how much I'm able to play in the event. And two, the rewards are kind of like, I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have one of those titles of, like, like top 1,000, top 100, or whatever, but that's really, bragging rights are about all you get from it, so... Yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I'm not trying to miss work over bragging rights, <laughs> so, um, definitely don't think I'm going to be playing quite as much in the second part. But of course I'll get to level 20 here for the first part. And uh, I'll still play a little bit in the second part, don't get me wrong, I just, uh, don't think I'm going to go super hard on it, so. Um, I've just kind of been talking over this line because this is a very standard one card, or one prank kid line here. And uh, we actually end up ripping this Fateful Adventure at the end, so we can even do a little bit of extra deck thinning in order to make sure we get this Water Enchantress and more of the rights out of the deck, and then also the Draker back as well. We can search out with the Fateful Adventure. Uh, I like doing that here in situations like this, even though I can't get access to the Griffin Rider for my opponent's turn, because uh, one, the Draker back being equipped to the Adventure token with the Fateful Adventure out will... will uh, potentially protect it from battle, which that effect actually is a lot more relevant than you might think it is. It comes up a lot, uh, both for and against me, a lot more than I thought it would. But uh, um, in addition to that, like I said, it's also just good to thin out our deck to make sure we don't top deck one of these cards. Because, like, we could have just not played the Fateful Adventure, and, like, yeah, not having the Adventure token and Draco back doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, it's, like, you know, against us. Or rather, I, I phrase that really weirdly. Having the Draco back and Adventure token on the board doesn't do much for us in terms of stopping our opponent for doing things, uh, from doing things rather. But uh, the main reason to have it, of course, is again to make sure we don't top deck any of those cards, and we're really sad if we do during the next turn. So you're definitely just gonna go ahead and get rid of this extravagance with the um, Ash here. Don't need that in my life, <laughs> and or don't need my opponent getting extra draws in my life. Especially given that because they played Extravagance, it's probably going to be a stun deck or a very control-based deck and, uh, you know, with like a lot of back rows and stuff. And advantage is, advantage being, you know, having more cards than the opponent does is going to be extra important to decks like that. So, um, yeah, it looks like they do, in fact, have an Eldritch. Interestingly enough, my opponent does not opt to bring the Eldritch back. Um, I guess they figure they're going to just get one off of Scarlet Sanguine and they don't need to. Maybe they actually value all three of their back rows that highly. I, I don't know, but it's uh, definitely a scary prospect. So here, we're going to see yet another... Well, actually, this is the first game. I just recorded the last Prank Kids Adventure video, uh, too, so... Um, that's why I was thinking another, what I was about to say. And uh, we're going to see an example of totally awesome being... Well, totally awesome here. Um, against Eldritch, just being able to make it going into the opponent's turn, so that way I know, like, if they've got, like, a Floodgate or something, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so here I'm not going to use the Toad on the Scarlet Sanguine, I'm just going to chain the Maxi instead. Not only to just allow myself to get the draw, to get the draw, rather, but, um, you know, I can handle this in, in Eldritch. Like, that's not going to be that big of a deal. I can, I can definitely even still lethal my opponent through this Eldritch, so I definitely don't care about them summoning it. And now we've got, not only do we have two Omni Negates up, but I'm going to throw out this Imperm to lock down that middle back row, so... Uh, now my opponent's back rows can't stop me at all. Now I can just focus on making sure I remove their Eldritch, ideally not by putting it in the graveyard, but by Banshee. Well, I guess they have another Eldritch anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much, but... Um, yeah, removing their Eldritch off the board, seeing if I can go for lethal this turn anyway, um, but mostly just, uh, again, making sure that my opponent's back rows don't mess me up. Which, again, I don't think they will because they've got totally awesome in Griffin Rider, but uh, that being said, a Lich will find ways to surprise you, and there is definitely still the possibility of a Solemn as well, so. 
Ah uh, yes, here I go for the Nightmare Unicorn as a means of getting rid of the uh, Eldritch. And my opponent does in fact have the Solemn Judgment, so um, that's a little scary, but it also cuts our life points in half, which is actually hugely relevant here because my opponent is, or because I've got so many things on board. Yeah, so here what my plan was is uh, I can actually have made DPE by... Oh, I want to do the time limit. I didn't even realize that <laughs> during the game. I thought they conceded at this point. But uh, yeah, what I was planning to do was actually I can turn both of my tokens into Link Spiders. This is actually kind of one of the reasons you like playing two Link Spider. At least I'm pretty sure this works, right? Because Vert is any two effect monsters. I'm pretty sure they don't have to have different names. But uh, I could have turned my Prankin's token and my Venture token both into Link Spiders, summon DPE, use DPE, pop the Eldritch, and then just easily swing for lethal. And then if even that gets stopped, I've still got the Battle Butler. Like, I have more than enough means in order to go for lethal here. So, um, all right, yeah, let's go and take a look at the next game now. All right, loading up game number two here of, I believe I have five altogether for this one. Again, would love to tell you the deck I'm playing against, but you can't check that with these replays, so... Um, I'll try not to point that out every single time. So this hand's not like the best. One, we're going second. Two, we opened like three prank kids. Um, but we're playing against Battle Wops. Or not Battle Wops specifically, but we're playing against like the new B Trooper type deck. So um, yeah, one to show this game off to show us. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel a little bad kind of saying this. I was going to say show us playing against this deck, but I mean, we're playing the tier one deck, and this is kind of. This is definitely a rogue deck, so it's a little. Eh. Eh. But. Um, it actually is going to be still a good game to show because um, we're going to have to play around their Link 4, which can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Uh, so we're definitely going to have to find a way to make sure that we get around that. Um, that and also the fact that it has 3,000 attack points definitely means that it's not always the easiest thing to do. Um, because as far as effects we have that don't target, or that, uh, yeah, don't target or destroy, I don't know that we even have any now that I think about it. Because, like, Nightmare Unicorn targets, Access Code Talker destroys. Obviously, Battle Butler destroys. Um, DPE obviously destroys. So, uh, I'm pretty sure my only option here is going to be able to be able to get rid of this is to run over it with uh, Access Code Talker. Or just something with more than 3,000 attack points. Which could also be a Battle Butler with a place up. I actually should have thought more about the possibility of setting that up with this hand. I probably could have done it if I really wanted to, but... I ultimately just end up going for Access Code anyway. Well, because the other thing too is that Access Code will let me pop the Field Spell, which will give them less plays during their turn as well. Yeah, so I'm going to start with the standard Prank Kids stuff, you know, sending a kid, sending for Meow Meow Moo, uh, getting another kid from deck, going for Doodle Doodle Doo. I uh, don't want to Prank Kids Pandemonium, because if you do that, you can only summon Prank Kids for the rest of the turn, so... Given that I want to go into Access Code Talker, I don't want that to be the case here. So uh, I'm going to go for Nightmare Unicorn just straight up with the token here. thought about putting the Field Spell back into the deck, but I wanted to keep both these cards for potentially next turn. So I decided to go straight into the Access Code Talker. I do make a minor misplay here. I forgot to pop the Field Spell before battling over the monster. That is going to let them get a token, which means I'm going to have to banish one more Link monster from my grave than I should have had to. But it's not a huge deal. But it does matter very slightly. You know, obviously, we, we're fine getting rid of the Nightmare Unicorn. We'd like to keep both Dodo Dodo Doo and Meow Meow Moo. Obviously, Meow Meow Moo more so than Dodo Dodo Doo in Graveyard. Um, you know, I do, ideally, we would have liked to have put back the Dodo Dodo Doo with this Pranks. But, um, again, it's not that big of a deal. And, yeah, opponent's not able to overcome the 5300 access code talker with just a single top deck. Go figure. I think that's true of, you know, pretty much any deck, not just... Well, not any deck, but I think that's true of many decks, I should say. Not just speed troopers there. But, uh, yeah, so we were able to take that game with a relative ease. Now let's go and take a look at the next one. I want to try to... I feel like I could almost remember what my opponent's playing off the tip of my tongue. Because I recognize the name. I saw the name... Uh, my opponent's name is New Nun, and I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, this was a, a good game from what I remember, but um, I don't remember what they were playing off the top of my head. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to show off, you know, we opened this hand, and this hand's definitely not that great. Um, I mean, it's definitely not bad, let me let me say that. I mean, any hand where you can get the Prank Kids line and an Adventure line is not a bad hand, but 
we've got two dropsies and we've got a really redundant amount of adventure cards here we've got the foolish we've got the water enchanters and we have the right of armas here so i've alluded to this in videos in the past but i wanted to make sure that i talked a little bit more in depth about this now as well if you see hands like this i think it's best to still kind of like play out the quote-unquote full line as though you did not have all this extra stuff because that is by far the best way to draw uh, negates from your opponent that aren't going to end up hurting you at all, right? Like, even though I've got the right of arm here and I could just activate that because that's my end goal anyway, I'm still going to foolish the, the water enchantress in my deck, and I'm still going to banish that water enchantress, not not this one that I gestured to, but that water enchantress in my graveyard to search the other right of arm here from my deck. Um, because there's a very real world, it actually happened during the last game, I didn't point it out, but our opponent uh, took our ash bait. Uh, when I went to use the Water Enchantress, which I mean, it's not really Ash Bait in the sense that, yes, I did want to get the Griffin Rider out and the Omni Negate up, but my main concern is getting the Prank Kids combo line. So if we can bait the Ash that way, um, you know, I, and obviously you want to do this before you combo anyway, because the Wander Griffin Rider is the Omni Negate you want on the board to protect your combo, but. Um, there's multiple ways to go about it, and like I mentioned in the last duel, uh, not only will it you know do all that stuff, it also provide some deck thinning, so that way you don't top deck uh, this stuff later on when it's dead. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to leave the foolish, sending the water enchantress from the deck, and then activating the water enchantress to add the right from deck to hand. Opponent did not end up having the uh, ash here, but. Um, this is also a good way to test for Ash, not only to see if your opponent activates it, but also to see if they even get the prompts to activate it. I actually kind of alluded to this a little bit when I was talking about why I like three Prank Kids placed and not more actual Prank Kids monsters in the deck, but I think I might have like not explained that super well. Yeah, when I talk about beating uh, Ash Blossom with plays, because I saw some comments saying, like, uh, you know, any... any decent player wouldn't Ash the place, and, and I agree. I think most players would Ash the Pranks. You should Ash the Pranks. Uh, the prank kids monster instead of the uh prank kids place but activating the place and seeing if they get a prompt to respond is a very good indicator that they might have an and they probably honestly have an ash blossom in hand so and sometimes you can't do anything about it sometimes you'll just have to try to play the prank kid and hope it's not an ash anyway but um it's good to have that information going into the play than not it's always better to have even if it's not going to necessarily change the outcome it's better to have that information than to not so that's kind of what i meant when i said i think that place is a good bait for Ash. It's not that I think a lot of opponents are going to be activating it. I mean, it happens sometimes that you get an opponent that Ash is your place. Um, but it's more to see if they, to probe if they have it, as opposed to whether or not they're going to use it in that particular instance. So. Opponent has a Cyframe Gamma here, right at the very end. It's just like, ugh, you know, the <laughs> right at the very end. Although this is actually not a bad place to to play it to be totally honest there could have been some that were maybe slightly better but not the worst in the world i suppose so here since i have the extra water enchantress and i don't need the token up because i don't have the griffin rider anyway i can sit with the water enchantress and send it for a link spider that's to affect monsters to make a dpe i could have used the dodo dodo do as well but if it actually ends up sticking around on the board and living through my opponent's next turn that's definitely just great for me and we, and we want that to be the case so um, I'll play, and it's not that much to play around it, you know, again, it just involves summoning this extra water enchantress that we aren't using for anything anyway. Plus, now that that extra water enchantress is in the graveyard, we can still even, even still use it uh, to add back a right of Armas here from grave to hand uh, during the next turn there. And we even drew a Nibiru off the top with pranks in case we need to, you know, go Scorched Earth here. Uh, opponent does have a bit of a scary board with the Lava Golem and the Pranker Tops, but um, that's all I think they really actually end up doing, which is totally fine with me, because uh, I've got the right, I've got the prank kids, you know. I definitely still have far more than enough points, especially now that I've got this cross out designator. Like, even if they had, like, a second Ash, which is something to think about. Sometimes your opponent does just have two Ash. It's not, you shouldn't play around two Ash all the time, but, like, you know, I did consider it here. But, of course, given, again, that we have the cross out designator, even if they did have it, it would definitely not have been... I was going to say that much of an issue, but it wouldn't have been an issue, period. Uh, I'm a little concerned about them maybe having Nibiru, because I have the Nibiru in my hand, and of course I'm only playing one, so I can't cross that out, but I feel like my opponent would have nibiru instead of Gambit if they had the option to last turn, so that's another thing. Uh, not necessarily, I mean, it definitely would have depended on the rest of their hand and what the opponent is thinking about the board state, but um, I'm reasonably confident they don't have it, so... And again, even if you think they might, if you're afraid they might, you can't just, like, play around it forever, right? <laughs> like, you do have to, you know, make your proverbial move at some point, so. 
And so here I did think about fusing into just uh, Battle Butler because I did have access to all the materials as well as the pandemonium there, but um, no, I ultimately decided to use it for a rocket right here. Um, I'm trying to remember why I wanted to have a Ripper and Grocer up for the opponent's turn, but because I think that was my ultimate goal of making the rocket right here. Oh no, I was trying to figure out if I could do lethal, and I figured 6,000 damage was the most that I could do. That's what it was. Now, see how, yeah, now, main phase two will bring back the doodle doodle do and the dropsies. Um, didn't do that before, uh, because the monsters you get with rocket ride can't battle, so I wasn't able to. And then, yeah, I'll just make a rip roar and roaster for my opponent's turn here. Uh, because they played like a lot of Golem and a uh, Pranker Tops, I'm pretty sure they're like some variant of Danger Kaija Lunalite. They probably don't have any back rows for me to blow up with the Ripporn Roaster, but wanted to make sure I had established it all the same. Plus, it gains an extra thousand from the Bow Wow Bark, and we can still make the Battle Butler anyway, so it's like, why not, you know? Um, and yet, the opponent does not seem to have an out for it as they are just going to concede at that point. So, all right, let's go and take a look at the next game. All right, looks like this game and the last one that's gonna follow it are a couple of shorter ones, definitely not a problem though. I just, uh, again, I wish I could just see what deck what my opponent was playing because it would actually make me remember how the game went, but um, yeah, I'll try not to be, again, too much of a broken record here. Uh, opening C, Ash, and Droplet as we're going second is definitely not something to complain about, but it looks like our opponents play Yieldledge, so that doesn't even really matter anyway. So now it is a little bit of something to complain about, but, uh, eh, you know, we can't complain. We peeled the water enchantress at the top because we're just the luckiest player in the world, so, eh, again, like I said, can't can't complain too much. But it's going to immediately flip a rivalry up against this right of our Messier. Ah, oh, I actually remember this game now. This game was actually really... I'm glad I get to show this game because we end up playing around this, uh, this fateful adventure as well as their other stuff in a lot of uh, fairly interesting ways. So, yeah, I'll try to go for the Scarlet Sanguine here. Um, I've got the Ash for that, though. They've got a Huaquero to block some damage. We can at least get a draw off of it thanks to Max C. Now, I've talked about this a lot before. Not a lot, but I've talked about this a couple of times before when talking about Eldritch. But uh, one of the most important things about Eldritch is like, yeah, their floodgates like rivalry are kind of scary. Um, but their main threat is the Eldritch itself. They could have all the floodgates in the world. If they don't have an Eldritch to follow up the threat on, then you can just beat them down with adventure tokens until the end of the day. And they had so many chances to play this Lord of the Heavenly prison i don't know but they just I, from what i remember they never end up activating it maybe you can't activate it like during the damage step which is or not I don't, we're not in the damage step though we're just in the battle phase uh, unless it says on. oh no it does say during your main phase but still they activate the rivalry during the main phase i just i guess they wanted to protect their other back row so that must have been it and now they're in a situation where they can't activate this last back row and now they can't play the lord of the heavenly prison that's the only reason i can think oh no it's true because yeah okay that would have been the case because it's torrential and only i can dictate when that activates right 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 oh no wait a second if it's set uh, hang on it's activated except okay so it is except during the damage check but it's not just during the battle phase so yeah so, so they could have summoned lord of the heavenly prison during that battle phase okay that's a little odd but whatever um, yeah, so, yeah, I'll just, uh, wander and griffin right of the Torrential, make sure my token sticks around, and now that rivalry is up, we have not used our normal summon yet, so I'm just able to summon the Dropsies and go for a, uh, one card, or a one prank kid combo line, and I know the opponent's two cards in their hand are just Lord of the Heavenly Prison and Rivalry, so I know that it is nothing to be afraid of there, and the opponent is well aware of that as well as they then move to concede. All right, we've got one more game. Like I said, let's go ahead and show it off. Yep, last duel here. Let's just go straight into it. Once again, don't... I, I said I wouldn't say it every time, and then I did anyway. Ah, whatever. <laughs> say la vie, right? Ah, another decent opening hand here. We've got the dropsies to lead with. We actually have the place as well, so we can do a two prank kids line. Um, if this place resolves, which it did. Yeah, this was another uh, one of those games that I was kind of talking about earlier where you can use the place to see if they have an ash. From what I remember in this game, they didn't have the... They didn't get the prompts to respond to the place, so I was fairly confident that my prank kids were not going to get ashed a little bit later on. And since we opened the extra dropsies here, we can do the, or rather we opened the dropsies in the place, we opened the extra prank kid, is what I meant to say. We can do the 
two card line, which means we can search the Pandemonium. We could have done that anyway because we've already got the pranks in our hand, but um, yeah, by searching the Pandemonium, we can now fuse for the Rocket Ride. Um, get the two, use the two prankins that we summoned to make the Bow Wow Bark, link the Bow Wow Bark and the Doodle Doodle Doo for the Rip Roar and Roaster, and then use the Rocket Ride to bring the Bow Wow Bark and Doodle Doodle Doo back. Those two, between the two of them and their effects, will be enough to get us uh, the three prank kids we need, as well as the prank kids pandemonium, into our hand. Oh, oh yeah, this game. I think I remember this game. <laughs> I think I remember what happened in this game. I think, anyway. There was a game I played here in the Duelist Cup that I actually ended up winning, but I forgot. Like, I did my whole combo line, and then I forgot to actually set the pandemonium. I think that might be this game. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny if it was. Let's see. Alright, like I said, yeah, making the Rip Roar and Roaster here, sending the Rocket Ride. I'm gonna use Doodle Doodle Doo to get back the Pandemonium and the Dropsies, and then again, the idea next turn is to Bow Wow Bark for the Fansies and Lampsies. Get to activate the pranks, and then, yep, yep, this was that game. I It was as soon as I clicked End Phase 2. I'm really good about that, not just with Master Duel, but like with video games in general, where like, I'll not realize that I made a mistake, or rather, I will realize that I made a mistake, like the instant it is too late to do anything about it, which is really frustrating. But yeah, here, I definitely forgot to set this pandemonium. Should be face down. But, even though we won't have access to Battle Butler, we got really, really lucky in that we actually happened to play against a pendulum deck. So, like, randomly, we actually happened to roll against the one deck where Rip Roar and Roaster is gonna be probably enough to make sure they don't have plays here. So this might look a little weird to activate Rip Roar and Roaster in response to the terraforming. You might be thinking, well, it blows up all spells and traps, right? So, wouldn't you want to wait until they activate whatever field spell they get off of terraforming? Oh, excuse me, I had to stretch there. And the answer is actually no, because of the Servant of Intimian. We'll let them summon from the deck when they've got three spell counters on it. And I know this is like their main starter. I've not played Endymion myself, but I've played against it enough to know that this is like their main starter. So if I can keep it from getting three spell counters, that is gonna go a long way towards winning that game. So that's why I used the Reform Rooster there in response to the terraform, because the terraforming was gonna give them their third uh, spell counter, so. We just want to make sure that we were hitting that before uh, it became a problem. And then, yeah, as you can see, that's enough for my opponent to concede. That's yet another reason why I always say knowing other decks' choke points is so good. I feel like some other players who might not be paying that as much attention there might be like, oh, terraforming, I'll just wait until they play the field spell in addition to their pendulum scale, and that'll just blow everything up. But uh, no, allowing them to do that would have gotten them three spell counters, they could have summoned something from deck, and they very easily, again, obviously I don't know the, their full hand there, but they very easily could have unbricked their hand by doing so. And we definitely don't want that. We want our opponent's hands to be bricky, so... Um, yeah, all right, that's all we've got for the games now. Let's go ahead and move on to the outro. Okay, everybody, I want to thank you very much, as always, for watching to the very end like this. That means a lot, not only to me personally, but is also a great way to support the channel. Also appreciative to those of you who are leaving comments and subscribing. Again, means a lot to me personally, and is a great way to support the channel. Uh, comments, love to see you, love to hear from you. You guys are always offering some really solid feedback and advice about both builds and gameplay, which is helpful not only to me personally as a player, but also to everyone who is watching in order to get like tips or advice so um i like it that way i definitely like the community learning style i don't consider myself like someone who's qualified to solely i guess lead and even if i was i, I wouldn't want to like because you learn so much from getting a variety of opinions and um having multiple people chime in i think community-based learning is the way to go so that is definitely the method that i like to take here and, of course, if you uh, subscribe, that is, again, not only a good way to support the channel, as I've said now multiple times, but but uh, you also get notifications of when my videos drop, which does happen every single day. So, if you subscribe, you do get a daily Master Duel video out of me. But that's about all the time that I have for today. So, once again, thank you very much for watching. Without further ado, this is XLex, signing out. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.